subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 15th of February. India advises its citizens to leave Ukraine temporarily amid border tensions with Russia. Taliban call on US President Biden to reverse move to half frozen Afghan funds. And India, Maldives hold third defence cooperation dialogue to expand bilateral cooperation. And now the news in details. The Indian Embassy in Ukraine on Tuesday asked its citizens, particularly students, to leave the country temporarily in view of uncertainties of the current situation amid increased speculation about a military conflict with Russia. Moscow has denied Western accusations that it is planning to attack Ukraine but is demanding legally binding guarantees that Ukraine will not be allowed to join the NATO alliance. The Indian Embassy in Ukraine's capital, Kiev, in a statement on Tuesday asked its nationals, particularly students, whose stay is not essential, to leave the country temporarily in view of uncertainties of the current situations amid speculations of a Russian invasion over rising tensions. In its advisory, the embassy asked Indian nationals to avoid all non-essential travel and keep it informed about the status of their presence. Earlier on Monday, the United States said it is relocating its embassy operations in Ukraine from the capital, Kiev, to the western city of Lviv in the wake of the situation after Russia amassed more than 100,000 troops close to the border. Parents and relatives of Indian students in Ukraine said they were worried about their safety and demanded the Indian government to arrange special flights to bring them back. कई फ्लाइट सस्पेंड कर दी गई है इसलिए हम लोगों ने कल स्टेट गवर्नमेंट और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट में राइटिंग में एक इंटीमेशन और एक हमारा प्रेजेंटेशन दिया था जो पेरेंट्स हमारा ग्रुप है उन्होंने कि हमारी ये व्यवस्था की जाए फ्लाइट की बच्चों को लाने की और बच्चे सेफ यहाँ वापस इंडिया आए Although Russia has denied Western accusations that it is planning an invasion, it has said it could take unspecified military technical action unless a range of demands are met, including barring Ukraine from ever joining the NATO alliance. In the latest, the Russian Defense Ministry on Tuesday said some troops in Russia's military districts adjacent to Ukraine are returning to their bases after completing drills. And India on Monday hit out at Pakistan at the United Nations, calling it an epicenter of terrorism where perpetrators and facilitators of terror attacks continue to walk free, enjoying state support and hospitality. Indian diplomat Rajesh Parihar highlighted how unmanned aerial platforms such as drones were also being used for cross-border trafficking of drugs and arms. Counselor in India's permanent mission to the UN, Rajesh Parihar, on Monday hit out at Pakistan by calling it an epicenter of terrorism where perpetrators, facilitators and financiers of terror attacks continue to walk free, still enjoying state support and hospitality. Speaking during the open briefing on the work of CTED, the Counter-Terrorism Committee Executive Directorate, Parihar recalled the dastardly 2019 Pulwama terror attack by Pakistan-based jaish e mohammed in which 40 Indian paramilitary CRPF personnel were killed. He said the world also knows where the perpetrators of 2008 Mumbai and 2016 Pathan Court terror attacks came from. But it is regretful that the facilitators still enjoy state support. This epicenter of terrorism nurtures terrorist entities with links to more than 150 UN-designated entities and individuals and its leader often extol terrorists as martyrs. We have consistently witnessed terror attacks on ethnic, sectarian and religious minorities including Christians, Hindus and Sikhs. Parihar also detailed Pakistan's relentless attempts to push terror on Indian soil, 
highlighting how unmanned aerial platforms such as drones were being used for cross-border trafficking of drugs and arms. He called upon the CTED to focus on such activities as well as in their reporting. And moving on, activists of Pashtun Tahafu's movement on Tuesday continue to hold a sit-in protest outside Pakistan's Sindh Assembly to demand the release of prominent Pashtun leader Ali Wazir. The protesters blame the sitting member of National Assembly of Pakistan, Ali Wazir, is being falsely prosecuted on anti-state charges. Activists of civil rights movement Pashtun Tafu's movement or PTM continued to hold a sit-in protest outside the Sindh Assembly in Pakistan's Karachi on Tuesday to demand the release of prominent Pashtun leader Ali Wazir, who they blamed was being falsely prosecuted on anti-state charges. Ali Wazir, a sitting member of National Assembly of Pakistan, has been languishing in jail since 2020, along with several other Pashtun activists for allegedly making anti-state comments. Earlier on Sunday, PTM activists also held protests in France, Belgium and Denmark to highlight the atrocities against Pashtuns and demand international intervention for the release of PTM activists and leaders illegally detained by Pakistan authorities. Inter-parliamentary union has also uh, expressed its concern on the arrest of uh, uh, MNA, uh, Ali Wazir, uh, but Pakistani authorities are still uh, uh, applying the delaying tactics in the courts uh, to prolong uh, the detention of uh, these uh, uh, activists uh, arbitrar uh, arbitrarily arrested uh, by the Pakistani uh, authorities. Uh, so it's really a matter of concern. Pashtuns have long blamed Pakistan for marginalizing them. They accuse they have been targets of military operations, ethnic stereotyping, enforced disappearance and fake encounters by Pakistan security forces over the years. The United States will split half of the $7 billion in frozen Afghan central bank assets on U.S. soil between humanitarian aid for cash-strapped Afghanistan and a fund for 9-11 victims. This move has irked the current government of Afghanistan. Taliban has warned that it would reconsider its policy towards the United States if President Joe Biden did not reverse his unjustified decision. The Taliban in a statement on Monday warned that it would reconsider its policy towards the United States if President Joe Biden did not reverse his unjustified decision to return only half of Afghanistan's $7 billion deposited on U.S. soil. A statement from the Taliban released by its spokesman on Monday said the Islamic Emirate strongly rejects Biden's unjustified actions as a violation of the rights of all Afghans. U.S. President Biden signed an executive order last week to free 7 billion U.S. dollars out of more than 9 billion frozen Afghan assets, splitting the money between humanitarian aid for cash-strapped Afghanistan and a fund for 9-11 victims. The Taliban statement said the 9-11 attacks had nothing to do with Afghans. While none of the September 11, 2001 hijackers were Afghan, the mastermind of the attacks, Al-Qaeda chief Osama bin Laden, was given refuge by the then Taliban government. The statement said the United States will face international blame and damage its relations with Afghans if the decision was not reversed. Meanwhile, a high-level delegation of the Islamic Emirate led by acting foreign minister Amir Khan Mutakki is holding talks with the representatives of the Gulf states in Doha, the foreign ministry said in a tweet. According to the ministry, the delegation of the caretaker government is scheduled to hold talks with representatives of the European Union, the Union of Religious Scholars and diplomatic missions operating from Qatar on behalf of Kabul. According to political analysts, Qatar is one of the countries that wants to play a mediating role between the Taliban government and the world in an effort that is more focused on bilateral interaction. And Nepal's main opposition, CPNUML, has decided to counter the ruling coalition party's impeachment motion against Chief Justice Cholendra Shamshe Rana, saying the impeachment proposal was brought with the intention of postponing the local level election. This decision was made in the UML Parliamentary Party meeting chaired by its chairman, KP Sharma Oli, on Monday. <laughs> Nepal's main opposition, CPN-UML, Communist Party of Nepal, Unified Marxist-Leninist, has decided to oppose the impeachment motion registered against Chief Justice Cholendra Samshed Rana. 
claiming it to as a pretext to postpone upcoming elections. The impeachment motion which has been registered in the Parliament Secretariat on Sunday morning by ruling party lawmakers has signatures of only 98 members of the Parliament, falling short of a majority needed for its approval. The ruling coalition would need to garner support from the opposition as well to pass it from Parliament, which is expected to go on for weeks. जसरी आयो जे नियतले आयो त्यो वास्तवमा तीनवटा कुरामा आधारित थियो एउटा अदालतलाई निरन्तर गिजोली रहने र अदालतलाई अस्थिर बनाउने दोस्रो निर्वाचन सार्ने The latest move to impeach Chief Justice Rana comes in wake of continued protest by fellow lawyers and justices who accuse him of seeking a political share in the cabinet and encouraging corruption in the judiciary Overall, there are allegations of anomalies, irregularities and corruption in the judiciary. With Chief Justice suspended for at least four months, agitating lawyers now are changing modalities of their protest, which has crossed 100 days and is counting on. देश लाई बचाओ नहीं उत्तम कार्य करने में कुछ है जैसे संपूर्ण सांसद और लाई जो इताउती बिराली के सन या चाहिए महायोग विरुद्ध जैसे सोची रहे सन उनसे अनुरोध सा कि यो देश को प्रथम अध्याय हो देश बनाऊं वहाँ भी योग लगाऊं चाहिए पापी हो लाई स्वाह पारूं भरसा लाई स्वाह पारूं न्याय जगत लाई Meanwhile, at Monday's parliamentary committee meeting, the opposition also witnessed the collection of signatures of lawmakers on blank papers. The latest move of CPN UML has triggered the possibility of counter-impeachment motion against four sitting justices of the Apex Court or the House Speaker. Chief Whip of the party denied the possibility of immediate tabling of impeachment motion, but cautioned that it would be used in future depending on the situation. And India's Defence Secretary Dr. Ajay Kumar was on a two-day visit to the Maldives during which he held discussions with the top military leadership as part of the third Defence Cooperation Dialogue and called on Maldives Defence Minister Maria Didi. A statement by the Indian Mission in Mali said both sides discussed joint efforts and capacity-building measures to counter transnational crimes and enhance security in the region. He also inaugurated the Phase 1 extension of the Composite Training Centre of the Maldives Maldives National Defence Force, built with Indian grant assistance and handed 2,800 kgs of medical equipment to support the healthcare sector. He also called on Maldives Junior Foreign Minister Ahmed Khalil on Monday and discussed issues of mutual interest. Since 1988, defence and security have been major areas of cooperation between the maritime neighbours. In 2016, the two countries also signed a comprehensive action plan to consolidate defence partnership. And a snow sculpture of India's iconic Taj Mahal monument created at a resort has become the main attraction for tourists visiting Jammu and Kashmir's Gulmarg town. The replica, measuring 16 feet, was built in 17 days after Igloo Cafe opened in Ski Resort town that became the centre of attraction for the visitors. A snow sculpture of the iconic Taj Mahal has become the latest attraction for tourists in Gulmarg in India's Jammu and Kashmir after the Igloo Cafe, which also attracted many eyeballs recently. The 16 feet tall snow replica of one of the seven wonders of the world has been erected by a team of four artisans in just 17 days and was commissioned by the Hotel Grand Mumtaz. Tories said they were elated after seeing the unique replica of the monument of love made up of snow. पहली बारी आए हैं हम लोग तो गुलमर्ग ही पहली बार आए हैं और यहाँ आके ये ताज महल देखके तो बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है बिल्कुल ही डिफरेंट सी चीज़ है जो कि गुलमर्ग में आपने ताज महल बना दिया क्या बिल्कुल बर्फ इसमें कोई लगड़ी वगड़ी नहीं बिल्कुल नहीं इसमें कोई ईट नहीं कुछ नहीं हमने ये हालो ब्रिक्स बना के ये बर्फ के उसी से हमने बनाया ये India's best-known attraction, the Taj Mahal, was commissioned in 1632 by Mughal emperor Shah Jahan in memory of his late wife Mumtaz and is visited by nearly 7 million tourists a year, according to official reports. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.